Hi guys, yasas que calos irsate to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. Today we're making a delicious artichoke and feta filo tart. It's perfect if you're hosting a nice dinner, maybe for Easter or spring, something really pretty to serve alongside really anything. This is very easy to make, very delicious, flaky, cheesy. There's artichokes on it, it's all delicious. Let's get started. So before we make the cheese filling, the first step anytime you're making something with phyllo is to leave it out at room temperature. But before that, overnight, put it in the refrigerator if it was in the freezer so it can thaw out properly. And then set it at room temperature for about an hour or two. Leave it in the packaging, don't take it out, otherwise it'll dry out. If you don't have phyllo or you prefer using puff pastry, you can do that instead. So we need about four ounces of feta cheese. And you always wanna get the block feta and crumble it yourself. It takes a few seconds and it's so much more flavorful. Crumbled uh, feta crumbles that are sold at the supermarket are salty. They're kind of moldy tasting too, if you ask me, I don't like them. And one more thing about buying feta cheese as a block, you know, in block form, you could rinse it if you want it less salty. It's a win-win. So now over here, I have kefalo graviera, which is a Greek sharp Gruyere cheese. It's so good. If you don't have it, you can use Gruyere cheese. Um, you can use Parmesan cheese, whatever you like. That's also about four ounces. Put that in the bowl with the feta. Then we're gonna add half a cup of heavy whipping cream. Now, if you wanna add cream cheese instead of the whipped cream, the heavy whipping cream, that's fine, or heavy cream. This is just gonna lighten it up a bit. A little bit of black pepper, no salt, because the cheeses are all nice. They're all salty enough. You can throw some herbs in here if you want. Rosemary would be nice, dill, basil. Mix it all up. Instead of the cream, you could also use ricotta cheese. Like I said, ricotta or, or um, what did I say? Cream cheese. Either one of the two. I'm gonna add a little more cream in here. Okay, that is ready. Now we're gonna get started on the phyllo. We're not gonna use the whole pack because we only need half of it, about eight layers. And this is the number four phyllo that's used for making baklava and things like that. It's thin. If you get the country style phyllo, you are gonna get a hardier, um, a hardier tart. It's up to you. See, when you thaw it out properly, the, the leaves, the leaves, the leaves, I say leaves because in Greek we say phyla, but the layers stay nice and soft and it's not dried up. Um, it dries up if you, if you leave it out exposed to air. So I'm gonna take one sheet at a time. And over here I have a baking tray that's lined with parchment paper. I have some unsalted butter that I added a quarter teaspoon of salt to for some flavor and I just melted it. And I'm just gonna drizzle the butter between each layer. If you wanna add some herbs to the butter too, that would be nice. Concentrate on the edges too so they're not dry. Here's the last layer, eight. So I'm not gonna put the butter on the last layer. I'm just going to spread this cheese mixture that we've just created all over the top, leaving a little bit of a border because I'm gonna gather the edges and crimp them up and create a nice little rustic border right after I'm done. So you just need a thin layer of this. And I should have added more cream. Maybe half a cup is a good starting point. <laughs> and then add a little more to thin it out. And maybe don't plop it all in the center like I just did. It'll be easier to spread and won't tear up most of your phyllo. Okay, that looks good enough. And before we move on, I'm going to wrap up this phyllo that's left over so it doesn't dry out. So you definitely don't want to waste half a pack of phyllo just sitting out there. It'll dry up in no time and you won't be able to use it for anything other than like an, a, a porto calopita or something like that, which is an orange pie. Okay, that step is done. Now we're going to take, now we're going to do the artichokes. So I have a can of artichokes. These are artichoke hearts and a lot of times they're sold quartered. If you can find the quartered ones or the halved artichoke hearts, 
I recommend those so that way you don't even have to do this step. You just drain them straight out of the can or you take them out of the freezer bag and then you plop them on top of the tart and what it could be easier than that. But if you have the whole hearts like I do here, cut them in half if they're small and in quarters if they're large. But the leaves are so delicate, the more you mess with them, the more they fall apart. Then you just want to take them and just arrange them on top of the tart. And if you put them all in one direction, it's just going to look pretty. Okay, and then I have some sun-dried tomatoes that are packed in oil. I'm just going to slice those up and just arrange them just in between the artichokes. Sun-dried tomatoes are so good. They add lots and lots of flavor. If you don't like them, leave them out. You know, you can substitute roasted red peppers. Roasted red peppers go really nice with this. If you, you know, that would be really good. If you have any sauteed vegetables, maybe asparagus. Let me know what you like to put with artichokes, but I'm just gonna arrange them just in between like this, here and there. And then I have some capers here, but you can use Kalamata olives if you prefer those. Just get them out of the brine and into the palm of your hand and then just go ahead and sprinkle them in between the artichokes. Maybe two, three teaspoons or however many you like. Like I said, if you're not a fan of capers or if you don't have them, you can finely chop some Kalamata olives, make sure that you pit them well and just sprinkle those in between. They'll give the nice little briny bite that the capers are gonna add right now. It's totally up to you. If you have pesto, you can dollop a little bit of pesto in between. There are so many different ways to make this. And then now I'm just gonna brush some butter all around the edges. And I'm just gonna create a little crust, just roll it up a little bit. And then the remaining butter is gonna get brushed all on top of that. And I was gonna uh, drizzle some olive oil on top, but since I still have a tiny bit of butter left, I'm just gonna brush the tops of the artichokes with it. But if you don't have any butter left over, what you can do is you can just take a little bit of olive oil and just drizzle it ac across the top. And there you have it. Look at how easy it is just to put together a beautiful, elegant tart. The oven is preheated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. This is gonna bake on the center rack for about 35 to 45 minutes or until it's beautifully golden all around. I'll show you what it looks like as soon as it's done. All right, so the artichoke feta and phyllo tart is ready and it was done in 35 minutes in my oven. Keep an eye on it. Like I said, once the border gets beautifully golden, and crisp, it's ready. The cheese will melt and it'll, it'll get golden and just a little bit extra on some parts of the tart, I guess wherever the butter decided to kiss it. <laughs> anyway, it is time to take a bite and it's very crispy. You wanna let it sit for about 15 minutes before you serve it, just so that way it's easier to slice through. And you hear how crispy that is? That is the sound that you wanna hear. Cut it into squares, put it on a platter or on a big cutting board and serve it. So delicious. I would serve some tzatziki on the side, but I serve tzatziki on the side of everything. Time to take a bite. Mm. So much flavor. This tastes better than a pizza. I am not even playing because pizza is not this flaky and crispy. <laughs> Salty, creamy from the cheese, Cheesy from the quefalo graviera that has melted to be so much better than mozzarella. So much flavor. The artichokes are kind of mild. I did sprinkle it with some finely chopped or finely sliced scallions to give it a little more freshness. You can top it with mint or parsley. I love the little kick of, that the capers give, that little bite of brininess. So perfect and delicious. All the flavors go so well together. I hope you guys give this a try and let me know what you think. The recipe for this, that you can print it out, it's on the website, www.demetriusdishes.com. We also do have a nice little shop there with specialty items from Greece. I hope you check it out and you support us by purchasing something from there. Thank you guys so much for spending time with me today. I'll see you all next time. Yes, us.